The 2023 edition of the Moto Edge Plus is finally here in the studio, and today I'm going to share with you guys my review of this device. The biggest thing I'll probably say is some of the improvements in here not only provide us better performance, more power, but also still dependable features that we've had in the past, specifically ready for. Also, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, 5G compatibility, eSIM support, and of course, a great camera system that's able to shoot 4K 60 frames per second on all of the lenses on the device, and even going all the way up to 8K. This is TK, and this is my review of the brand new Moto Edge Plus 2023 edition. Let's check it out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So here we have in front of us the package. This is the, again, the 2023 edition, uh, the US variant of this. Now there is somewhat of a similar version of this internationally available, but this is the focus on this video. We have a charger that comes in the box. This is gonna be the 68 watt charger that's gonna be able to help us charge this device. And of course we have a 5100 milliampere battery, slightly bigger than most of the ones we see here. Lastly, a USB-C to C cable to provide us the ability of charging it and transferring data to it. One of the biggest things we'll notice right out of the box is the design change. You notice the material on the back is a little bit, uh, they're calling it inner standard black, but it kind of almost looks like there's a lot of stars in the sky. And as the light hits it, you'll get that definitely really nice reflection. You have a triple camera setup on the back, a 50 megapixel camera that's gonna be the primary sensor, a 50 megapixel that's gonna be the ultra wide, as well as a 12 megapixel that's gonna be a portrait lens. And last but not least, we have a 60 megapixel camera on the front, again, 4K 60 all across all the lenses, and of course, shooting up to 8K 24 frames per second as far as the maximum resolution. Wireless charging here at 15 watts and five watt reverse wireless charging, and of course, 68 watts connected to the power connection here with the brick that is included in the box. This device does support dual SIM, except that it's going to be one physical SIM and one eSIM. So that's going to be one of the big benefits. Stereo speakers as well, four microphones to be able to give us some of the best audio in video. And we'll definitely do a test of that. On the top, secondary uh, basically speaker as well as uh, the microphone. And of course, some of the other arrays uh, are available there. Power button and of course, volume rockers are on the right, nothing on the left. Fingerprint sensor built into the device. And we always have, still have this always on display interface from Motorola, which is absolutely fantastic. And I really love how this has been done. And not only that, also the way we interact with our device. One of the biggest things we'll notice also on the design here is that we have a quad curved display, meaning the display is not just curved on the side, it's also curved on the bottom. So as you're swiping from the bottom, you're not actually hitting an edge every time you, sw uh, you swipe. Although the title of the, <laughs> of the phone is called Edge Plus, it really has very little edges for us to actually be able to get stuck on. The display that we have in here is a beautiful 6.7 inch display. Now this is a 1080p or full HD plus display, but the biggest kicker here with the POLED uh, display that we have here is that it goes all the way up to 165 frames per second. And this is gonna be a very unique experience because very few devices will give you the ability of going there. Most of them will give us the ability of going to 120, 60, 90. This one goes all the way up to 165. And now you're able to leave it in uh, obviously in auto mode, which basically smart uh, optimization all the way up to 120. But if you need to push it to 165, it would be under the display settings and easily set. And of course, as you can imagine, uh, the customizations and the interface here is very much a pixel experience meaning very much close to stock Android the way we'd expect it. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off the flash. We have the toggles, the ability of customizing them. And we still have, of course, the Motorola. Uh, I would like to call them basically iconic features. So here, if I do the chop, I can turn on the basically the flashlight. And of course, if I turn on the camera, I'm able to do the twist, switching between one version of the device to the second, well, one camera to the other from the front to the back. Now, while we're looking at specifications, the 8 Gen 2 is going to be powering this device and it's gonna have eight gigs of RAM. And I will say this, although you may it may sound that it's not enough of RAM, eight gigs of RAM with the Motorola UI that we have in here is again, very light, very customized, uh, very lightly customized uh, UI. I am running Nova Prime on top of it. It really runs beautifully and Nova has no issues. There's gonna be two variants of this, a 256 and a 512. The 512 model was the one that I have here as far as internal storage. And it's gonna obviously have UFS 4.0 and LPDDR5X. So not, not an issue as far as you know specs on paper. This is definitely going to perform and give us everything. 5100 milliampere battery, fast charging on this, USB 3.2, and of course, uh, we also have a Bluetooth 5.3, all the connectivity that we'd expect. Now, as you'd expect, this one supports 5G. I've been using this on T-Mobile here in my area. And again, this is just a sample speed. The speeds will vary, but depending on where you are, if you have a very good strong signal, this is definitely gonna be a kick-ass experience on this. There's no question connectivity on this is not going to fail. 
One thing I will also mention that as you can imagine, performance is also not going to disappoint at 1950 uh, with the single core and 5073 on the multi-core for the Geekbench 6 running on this device. We also have obviously a gaming experience to help us uh, tune this experience. This is with the standard default profile. And this is again, one of the fastest processors on the market right now. So nothing faster than this yet, but at, the, at least what we're getting here is the best performance matched with the best hardware. Now, one of the biggest features that we have here that we don't have on many devices on the market is a desktop experience. But not only that, in my opinion, one of the best desktop experiences that we are able to get to date. And the reason I say this is not only does it work via PC and tablet, meaning you can connect it directly to a physical hardware, but it also works wirelessly. So you're able to connect it to a TV or even connect it to a supported display that allows us to connect to it. So wired or wireless here for a display. And of course, the ability of jumping in, configuring the different options that we have for PC experience. The main benefit here is you're leveraging the 8th Gen 2, you're leveraging the RAM, the storage, the fast connection, the 5G connectivity directly within the system. As I'm showing you guys with this quick sample, I connected it directly into a hub that had a keyboard and mouse, a monitor, everything connected to it. And I was able to use it as a desktop experience. I love the fact that I was able to resize windows, open multiple applications and utilize the full wide display. I had a 32 inch display that was sitting there. And of course it worked beautifully with it. If not, well, the video didn't play all uh, full screen in there, depending on how your player is going to be, but the experience is very nice. You're able to jump between standard mode, gaming mode, uh, broadcasting mode for movie watching content, and everything is categorized easily. You're able to even use the device's main display as a cursor to be able to control it via mouse. And if you have a keyboard and mouse connected to a hub via USB-C, not only is your phone connected to the internet, but it also charges at the end of the experience, meaning when you're done, you're not gonna be disappointed with the experience and you're gonna have a fully charged phone to go and start using it. So a lot of really good things running in there with the Moto Edge Plus right now. And of course, I'm happy to see that all of the features of Ready4 are built into this device. We do need to protect our device, even though this has IP68 water resistance, it's not definitely uh, shatterproof. So I've been using a few cases here. I have a couple of cases from Poetic here that were sent to me, a clear case with nice, pretty good protection. Also pro provides us a couple of options here. If you wanna use your own glass protector, they have the past, there's basically the uh, just the frame where you're able to put it directly on your device and it'll actually match it, you put it on, and you're pretty much ready to go, uh, no problems at all. And there is protection again, even on the ports on the bottom, which makes it very, very functional. A cover for the USB-C port, but an opening for the speakers on the top and on the bottom. And one of the biggest things that they also offer here is the ability of using one that has a plastic protector that you can use. Now, this one is not a glass protector, but you can use it here and provide protection for your device in case you wanna use their built-in. Or use the secondary piece that they provide in the box that allows us to actually use our own display. And of course, one of the nice things about this is that you can see your design and of course the, the phone's color on the back. They do have another case here that's more of a kickstand case. Now it gives us the ability of basically creating a kickstand experience and still provides us the same level of protection with these uh, kind of like symbolized screws here. They're not real, but otherwise looks really good. All the openings for the microphones on the front, on the back, on the top and on the bottom are there. Very nice. And last but not least, of course, we do have this clear case that I was also able to pick up. And this one provides us with basically more of a see-through experience for the phone while providing us that protection that you'd expect. Very nice, very simple, and very easy to use. And this is also gonna be very nice for a kind of uh, glass protectors that you have in there. Fingerprint sensor works really good. Double pressing the power button launches the camera, all the things that you normally expect. But one of my biggest features that I love here is this display. This display that allows us not only to interact with our music player, interact with the messages that we get, respond to certain messages without even having to unlock the phone, has been fantastic and I love interfacing with it. And one of the really nice things about it is that I haven't seen any impact to battery life using this feature for Motorola. Now we talked about the camera sensors at the beginning, but let's go ahead and talk about the camera modes that we have in here. First and foremost, we have uh, three camera sensors or three primary sensors. There is the standard, the ultra wide and the portrait lens. The portrait lens uh, runs on its own. So if you turn it on here, this is the portrait lens and it's gonna be that little sensor on the right side. And if you actually go into the photo mode and you jump into the two, it jumps into that sensor as well. The ultra wide and the macro are pretty much the same camera since we're able to get a better autofocus with, uh, with an ultra wide and you're able to jump straight into that camera and get a utilization from there. Uh, we have a few filter options, of course, Google lens customization, swipe down option to be able to change the different options in here from basically um, active uh, photos and so on, all the different conf configurations that you want. Video, same thing, uh, very much. You can go in there, customize. Uh, you have the three different options or two different options, but one of the really cool things in here. There is a stabilization function in the camera and there's also a horizon lock function that's built in here. This allows me to, and I'm gonna show you guys this real quick clip, 
as I'm holding the phone and I'm basically tilting the phone sideways and I'm shooting video with it, the orientation of the phone is irrelevant of how the video is shot. It stays in 16 by 9 or 9 by 16 and that's one of the biggest benefits of using this mode. And of course you have stabilization. The other thing we also have is the ability of jumping in with uh, subject tracking and that allows us to basically have a focus on, as I'm showing you guys with a quick clip with my son in the backyard, uh, he was playing with his katana and last thing you notice is as I'm moving around and I'm doing different things, he stays in focus. I never once had to touch, uh, well, keep continuously tapping on, on the subject to make sure that he's in focus. You start it at the beginning of the video and it stays on it and it locks on the subject. Really, really nice. But what I love about it is the 4K 60 frames per second resolution that we have in here, let's jump into directly into it. When you do jump into the uh, basically horizon lock, it does drop to full HD. But 4K 60 is supported on the ultra wide 4K 60 on, the, well, obviously not the macro, but on the 2X, let's go ahead and jump into the 2X and 4K 60. And of course, if I switch over to the front facing camera, again, baby, 4K 60. This is literally some of my favorite features that I see on devices. And I love that not only do we have a large sensor on the front, but it is utilized and we definitely get better video. Let's jump outside real quick and do a quick sample of the video on the front facing camera and the rear main facing camera in 4K 60 goodness. We're gonna go ahead and start off with the front facing camera here. It's a 60 megapixel camera that's capable of shooting 4K 60 frames per second. And that's definitely a much better improvement than over some of the other options that we have on the market. And that's because we can actually shoot at 4K and at 60 frames, meaning I can match the resolution from the front and on the back camera if I wanna be able to record uh, different scenes and different experiences. Now we're shooting with the main sensor on the back. Now the beautiful thing about this is for 4K 60, I can jump into the ultra wide to the main sensor or even using the 2X. All of them will give me the ability of shooting at 4K 60 frames per second. And that's gonna mirror the front facing experience and that's one of the benefits of having the dual, uh, you know, well, the camera setup that we have in here. We have not only a portrait lens, but we also have the ability of doing portrait video as well as obviously high resolution video. A lot of capabilities and of course, I'll show you guys a couple of demos right now as I was shooting my son, he was playing here with his bow staff in the backyard. You can see here with the portrait video that it did a very nice job of uh, basically defocusing everything around him and focusing the experience on him. It automatically draws your eyes to the subject in the video. And then the next one I did is, which is essentially um, autofocus tracking. It enables us to actually keep the subject in the video always in focus. Even if I'm moving, the camera automatically locks in. The moment I select the subject, it creates a grid around them and it looks really, really good. But again, this should be a pretty good example with the audio and video basically capabilities that we get from this device. And again, very, very nice. Now, as you saw there, the video quality on the front facing camera is actually really good. And I love the fact that again, that it's matched across the sensors and we have 8K is a great capability and I love having it on devices. I still think we're not at the level where we're able to basically easily share 8K footage. 4K 60 is great because you shoot at a higher frame rate, reduce it down to the, to the frame rate you wanna be able to produce from it. Let's say share it to friends at 30 frames per second and even drop down to even slower if you wanna be able to do a little bit of a slow-mo action. And I think that's one of the main benefits here. But if you're shooting at 24 frames per second at 8K, you're limited to that. And that's going to be basically for more of a scenic view. And I feel like that's primarily what it's used for at this point. Large views, or if we're trying to basically take footage of a, an area where there's not a lot of movements or fast movements in there, the 24 frames per second is definitely going to do great. But let's not waste too much time. Let's jump into the audio experience. We have Dolby Atmos configured or tuned speakers on here. Uh, and we have, again, four microphones for the camera. Uh, and then I should, hopefully you're able to hear the great audio from the video that we just did. Volume is 100%. This is our favorite song, Alex Crindo Jumbo. This is an NCS, no copyright song. Let's go ahead and play. Jack it up. I have to say one of the, it's definitely one of the loudest ones I've been able to say uh, here on the market right now. Uh, the sound is definitely nice. It's full. It's trying to give us some of that bass, not necessarily a very full bass, but again, this is stereo speakers that we have in here. Great display, uh, HDR10 plus on this. And of course it's a full HD plus up to 165 frames per second. You're not going to be disappointed. But the biggest thing obviously we want to talk about as well is gaming and let's talk a little bit about the gaming center or the gaming assistant that we have in here now the system that they call here they're calling in game time and this is actually what you're seeing here that little frame rate uh, player here i'm going to go ahead and click it you notice that we have a different uh, options built in here as far as what you're able to customize uh, we have the uh, block calls block notifications lock mode of course you have different performance options the ability of going between high performance standard and battery saver depending on your experience let's go ahead and close that 
And uh, the other thing, we of course have the screen shot screen recorder that's built in here as well. Uh, basically the uh, acoustic lights share, configuring the touch sensitivity and the ability of turning on the frame rate player, which allows us to actually replace, let's go ahead and turn this off. It replaces the little two dots that's typically the indicator for it with the frame rate of the current, the, what's going on on the display. Unfortunately, it does not record when you're doing screen recording because it's not part of the UI, so it doesn't actually record it there. But if I wanna be able to configure it, let's go ahead and go back here. Click on it and you're able to jump back into it. We also able to, of course, uh, configure the brightness and the speaker on here because I lowered the speaker in here. Settings and of course, uh, freeform if you wanna be able to configure it there. Uh, playing games on this is not going to disappoint. Again, eight gigs of RAM, uh, 512 gigs of internal storage will allow us to put a lot of things on it. But not only that, also the ability of using a high refresh rate means we're gonna be able to play games at a very good refresh rate. Namely, 90 frames per second from Call of Duty Mobile, as well as 60 frames per second, easy and, continu and continuous in PUBG Mobile for even 30 to 45 minutes without overheating. And that's one of the benefits of the HM2 made by Qualcomm and of course in collaboration with TSMC on that one. Now the biggest thing I'll probably say with the Edge Plus 2023 edition is it continued the, the same essence of what we saw last year with the 22 edition, but it actually kind of gave us a better deal in the performance and everything that we're getting here. We're still looking at a 512 gigs of internal storage device, a, uh, basically a triple camera sensor uh, in the back, a 50 main, a 50 secondary ultra wide, and a 12 megapixel uh, for the, you know, the portrait imagery. And I'm showing you guys a lot of images right now now a lot of samples that I've been able to capture with this device. I also used it with a gimbal. Uh, this is the Insta360 Flow, which allowed me to actually be able to get some really good footage over the weekend when I was with the family at a, a nice little charity run, a walk and run uh, for basically, you know, raising funds for the local children's hospital. The biggest thing I'll probably be say is the cameras on here are very much um, they, they're giving me a lot of pixel-esque experience. It's very close. The desktop experience on here for the Ready 4 is really good and very unique. You have video output, and not only that, great audio and great connectivity with it. So the, the main benefit I would probably say is if you're using the main sensors on the back, you're not going to be disappointed. The portrait lens that we have in here doesn't give us a lot of pull when we're going into basically as a zoom, but it's intended to basically give us a good portrait imagery. So it's done in a way where they want us to be able to get great pictures. We're also able to use portrait video in here as you're seeing here with the sample that I'm sharing. And it looks really good, especially when you're able to record the content in good lighting. You're definitely gonna be able to see that subject separation and that focus effort on there. Uh, portrait imagery here, you're able to not only isolate the subject, but provide you that nice depth of field. Uh, the main sensor performs really good in low light and in really good uh, lighting conditions. The processing that we have in here is definitely very good. What I would probably say is overall, what you're getting here is, although on paper it may sound like a spec bump, but the few changes that they've done, the quad curve display on the front, the HN2, the 5100 milliampere battery, the 68 watt charging, it's a massively well-designed package. And this is something that I'm so excited for because I'm actually switching to this and this is going to be my main device from now on. And this is one of the reasons why. It's all of the features that we have built into this device and it looks and it functions absolutely fantastic. It runs the latest processor, but it also gives me the ability of plugging it in whenever I'm traveling and not have to bring my laptop with me if I just wanna do general, like regular desktop work experiences because I can connect the Bluetooth keyboard and mouse to it and it becomes literally like almost like a portable laptop like we've seen with the next stock and some of the other options on the market. I do wanna say thank you very much to Motorola for allowing me to check out the S Plus 2023 edition. My only thing I would probably say is I wish that the 23 edition still had the pen input interface that we had that we had last year with the 2022 edition. This one did not carry to this year, but you're still getting the better bang for the buck, the better performance, a better price than what we've seen before. And of course, the overall experience that you're getting here is really good and very much uh, the best that Motorola has to offer in 2023, at least here in the US. There is an international variant of this uh, that is not named that the same way, but provides the same experience. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. And of course, I'll see you in the next video.